Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. I wish that you are having a good day as I wish that all your days and your weeks and your life will be good for you and for humanity inshallah. Or for Christianity as we agreed before. Today we are going to talk about towards effective civil society organizations. Towards effective civil society organization, this part one. On Monday we delivered the first part in Arabic and today we will deliver it in English. So I have to thank my colleague Ahmed al-Sheikh and Mahir al-Sayed and Sahar who helped me in organizing this talk and all the talks. And if you want to join any of our social media, my social media is here in front of you. What is a civil society? I received a question from one of my colleagues in Germany uh, two weeks ago and he was asking me or telling me that I'm politicizing my talks when, when I was talking about the uh, failing state, the fragile state, the stable state. I told him, okay, this question came to him from one of his friends in some parts in Africa on the Middle East, as he told me, again, to correct my knowledge. And he told me, uh, it's politicized. He said, not politicized. If people understand what is the role of civil society organization, it is cross-cutting in all the aspects of life of the beings in the society. Beings means human being and other beings, including water, including climate change, including uh, mountains and all the habitats. So what is the definition of society? Society for me, civil society, is the society of the citizens. The citizens which is the people like you and myself. The citizens become, in this society, the civil society, the main decision makers in managing the state affairs through its institution. And if you want to talk about civil society, you have to understand that this is a society made by you yourself as a citizen and run by you through the institution which have been created inside the state. Clear? This is the civil society. It's you as a citizen. What is the civil society organization then? It's every voluntary non-governmental uh, society or, or, or organization founded, managed, and owned by the community, which is a community of the citizens. Okay? Not founded, managed, and owned by the military or security. So when we talk about civil society organizations, it is the citizens who are founding it, managing it, directing it, and leading it. Because the security and the military forces have different sacred role, we'll talk about it later on. This is civil society, it's a voluntary organization, a governmental organization. Many definitions being made for what is a civil society organization or what is a civil society as. That's why when we talk about this, it's not a Quran, it's not a Bible, it's not a holy book, it is something we actually uh, encourage people to make a definition for it, for it. Even you yourself, you might start thinking of another definition, if you like to have another pioneering definition. Other definitions, it's a group of voluntary independent, independent, non-governmental, non-political, not-for-profit organization, which respect diversity, inclusiveness, partnership, empowerment, transfer, transparency, and respect, and, 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 and. I say it again, so I said many definitions. It is a group of voluntary, organ independent, organ non-governmental organization, non-political and not-for-profit organization. They respect diversity, inclusiveness, partnership, empowerment, transparency and respect. Clear? What is the scope? As I mentioned, 
the scope of civil society organizations and uh, what they do they do most 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 of what the citizens need or what the beings in our society needs cross-cutting because the role is to complement the role of the government because that's why you see all these and more and more humanitarian and charitable advocacy political uh, political rights human rights children and women rights minorities and ethnic minorities protection protection of most marginalized community protection of children's special need sustainable development climate change forestry conservation and habitat media drama culture art journalism youth sports water agriculture uh, livestock uh, community markets local economy, economy market uh, research think tanks capacity building and training political parties and tribes are part of the civil society organization syndicates union for professional skilled workers and talented and pioneers women family and single parent care organizations elderly disabled homeless and destitute literacy adult education public awareness and heritage and history uh, religious organization also as mosque churches and temple and synagogue and others the more <laughs> the citizen need the more that the number of the society will be organized it is a spontaneous response to the need of the community by the citizens themselves so I give an example which happened to me I mentioned it many times one of the lords here in the UK in Scotland and they saw a little bird uh, and start standing behind the, the, the window and just throw it from the glass uh, from, from the glass of the window and she was so beautiful and he took a, a, a picture of it and trying to search for it is a species and unfortunately he found that it's diminishing or vanishing and he organized a small organization to protect such a species another one organization was talking about the frogs the dogs the cats the bees and all this so the more needs created by the society will, will let the citizens themselves to organize a group of people to make organization to respond to such need. It's an endless story. It's an endless story and never ending story of the needs found for the community and the response found for certain members of the community to the such need. What is the role of the army and security forces? Now we talk about we talked about the definition, yet let us talk about that because now we found that these two departments are heavily involved in many things. First of all, let us say that both of them has a sacred role to play. Sacred. I mean sacred because the individual personnel working in these two departments or to this institution can give their life for their job to protect the society and to protect the country and to protect, protect the citizens. Okay, let us agree on how sacred is the role. After that, security forces, what is this? It's an independent state, an institution should not be manipulated by any government or any politician. It's number one. Number two, it, its, its function is to keep, protect, maintain the safety of whom of the citizens okay fighting crimes and criminals and maintain the law and order in society so it is on the microscopic level okay the security forces should protect the citizen in the country inside from all those criminals and bad apples in the society they could be shot dead by some of the outlaws by some of the criminals by some of the gang uh, uh, leaders by those traffickers, uh, the, the people who are working the traffickers, uh, tra tra trafficking and uh, trafficking of girls and boys and all these sorts of things, drug dealers, uh, arms, arms, 
uh, uh, lawful arms, uh, 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 armed sets, and all these sort of things. Army and military forces also have a sacred role to play. Their mandate to secure the security of the state, the borders, the skies, the seas, the land. That's why they can give up their life to do this. Okay? So the role is in the independent nation also, independent nation should not be manipulated by a leader or by a politician. Because they are independent, they are above, because they, it says the army and the security are uh, uh, long-standing state and institution and their age and their time span and their life in the society is beyond the length of the government and office, the term of the government and office. So protection and of the state from the foreign enemies, liaising with the security forces to fight the smugglers and the smuggling itself. This is this is their sacred role. Okay. What are the pitfalls? What are the pitfalls and the caveats of the military and security forces? So we agreed that they are having sacred function because they can give up their life to protect me as a citizen or to protect the country. The pitfall when they lose the objective and the sacred and noble aim that they have been founded for and they started to do something else, not in the mandate of the dignity and the, and the credibility and the integrity of the, their mission. Interference in the state political, economic, private business, drama, media, for profiteering. This is number one. Losing their independence, neutrality, impartiality, uh, transparency, and become politicized. Losing, losing their main sacred objectives of protecting the citizens and the state, forgetting, forgetting, which is very important, that the citizens are the making, uh, and the citizens are making the highest authority in the state. What do I mean by the last one? The citizen, the citizen, like you and me, are the ones through their tax paying, are paying the salaries and buying all the arms for these security and military forces. So the highest authority inside any country is the value of the citizen. And they give the, response, the second responsibility to the security and military to protect the state and to protect the state. Once you lose their uh, objectives, they become, it, they become actually politicized. So, interference in state political, economic, private, business, drama, media, we see it every day nowadays, unfortunately. Profiteering, losing their independence, neutrality, and so on and so on, and being manipulated by a political leader, or the king, or the queen, or the president, or the prime minister, or, 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 or. This is the problem, which you shouldn't have. And all this, come to me as questions. After my colleague from Germany phoned me, they started to send me some questions, the relation between the uh, between the military, security, and the civil society organization. If the civil society organization are not allowed to become political, okay, as we agreed, how can you explain that the political parties and tribes are civil society organizations. We mentioned in the function made by civil society, one of them is political party, or a mosque, or a church, or a synagogue, or a temple. In the mandate of the political party, it is mentioned as political, for the political interest of the public. Okay? As well as the tribes, it's in the mandate, it's written that. It's allowed as a civil society organization to stand on the uh, society's ground, on a very firm ground, to become a political party and through its mandate. 
while civil society, other civil society organizations are not like that. So this is the exceptional for the political party at that time. So when we look at actually, somebody would ask me, how about the mosques, the synagogues, the religious institution? Yes, they are civil society organization. What I'm saying here, because I know some of the people are actually could be secular or communist or liberal or call themselves whatever they want to call themselves, they consider this religious institution as non-civil society organization. In my own view and my own definition, they are a part of the package of the civil society sector and they are civil society organization because they are founded by the citizens of the country and they have their mandate and the mandate in their institution today could actually go back to some of the values of the religious values of the religion and they are civil society organizations. Another question she came, how about those organizations who are, just listen to this, are what? Training public, including politicians, on politics, political management, negotiation with different armed and political groups, political awareness, maneuvering in armed conflict zones, controlled by different armed political groups. These are civil society organization with a special mandate but here is the ultra care which they have to do they have to be showing the state of ultra and absolute transparency impartiality humanity independence and neutrality to all parties including observers and this is what we found happening with the committee, International Committee of Red Cross, when it goes and negotiates for the release of the prisoners of war, or go to uh, visit the uh, detainees, or go to visit the uh, hostages, or, 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 or. And this also, as I mentioned in the Arabic talk uh, earlier this week, about Sudan Lifeline. Sudan Lifeline, in the mid-80s, was the war between the North Sudan and the South Sudan. And there was nearly a famine in the South Sudan. And in this famine, they wanted to send airdrop from the north to the south. So the government in the north in Khartoum with WFP and United Nations decided to have airdrop to bring those aid material to them. Some of the local, national and international organizations were a part of this package. Not only that, I was told and informed that one or two organizations were a part of the process of no political or the peace negotiation between the armed forces in the, in the north and in the south and the government in the north. Not only that, even in Syria nowadays. In Syria, no, one, not in Syria, in the uh, Philippines. One of the humanitarian organizations was a part of the negotiating process of the peace which happened and was successfully signed last year. Not only that, New United Nations nowadays is having several such a group to be a part of the negotiation for peace in the Syria. And it's actually having about seven or eight or ten meetings in Geneva and Brussels and others. So if there's a clear mandate and ultra transparency and found partnership between you and the other organizations, this could happen. All should happen to me, 2010, when WFP was thrown out from Somalia by the armed group who are trying through humanitarian forum to replace the role of WFP and negotiate with WFP that we take the uh, uh, food material and distribute it through other organization. What we have done, we send email to the foreign office of UK of, uh, in London. We met with the uh, 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 American, I want American Embassy, what, why I'm saying this? Because we have to find the main player and to inform them in a transparent way that's our role. The American Embassy in London, the Foreign Office in London, then when we went to Nairobi, we visited the American Embassy, the British Embassy, and the Sudanese Embassy, the Egyptian Embassy, the UN departments involved in this, and the Kenyan government departments. Before we started to move in, Actually, unfortunately, it did not succeed, our effort, but this is how we have to involve people 
to let them understand that you are going to these conflict zones so they don't classify you as a terrorist or radical or uh, organization or extremist organization. How about the organization between the civil society organization and the security and military? If there is communication between the security and the military, okay, and they want to communicate with any civil society organization, they can do that, but through, as they are a part, civil society organization, as they are part of the independent government institution, and the uh, military and the security are, are part of the independent government institution, the civil society organization should be answerable to whom? To them through the relevant departments in the government only. Yani there is no direct link, direct communication between the military and the security in, 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 in the state. And so their order or their actually request should go through the relevant department and institution who are looking after the uh, this civil society organization. So the military and the security and the intelligence have the right to ask for any report, but the connection should be through the relevant department in the government. What about the relationship between private business, businessmen, and the civil society sector and organization? It becomes a fashion nowadays that all those millionaires and billionaires and trillionaires are trying to do something nice for humanity or for my, in, in my own terminology for Christianity. Christianity, because I'm trying to use the word which I talk about it uh, three, four weeks ago, Christianity. Actually, try to be nice. To cover what? Some of them are extremely good. Extremely good. Extremely good. No doubt. But there's some bad apples inside them. They would like to do this as a camouflage, to cover on avoiding and escaping paying the government taxes. This is very, very crucial. Second point is money laundering. Some of those businessmen could have an organization, but they might have work abroad say that actually I have an organization registered in Paris or in Rome or in London or in whatever it is capital and I would like to help the people in Bangladesh or Pakistan or Afghanistan or Sierra Leone or Sri Lanka uh, or India or uh, uh, DRC or uh, Central Republic of Africa or whatever you call it. So I'll be sending it through the wiring it through the banking system but when it goes there it goes to into a fraud area where there's no project where there's no project and the money could be used for something else money laundering through fraud cash transfer to non-existing field social developmental and humanitarian projects and this is now even in UK nowadays the child commission is becoming very busy in trying to discover such businessmen and their own organization. The third one is benefiting personally the businessman, his company, because he might have uh, companies which is dealing with food, transportation, uh, media, uh, television. Uh, so all the contracts which need to be uh, done by the charitable organization could be done through his own companies as well. Or he's employing his auntie, his uncle, his son, his daughter, all these companies have been registered, are registered by the name of his family's other friends. This is where the bad apples among the businessmen, business community is happening. So they can have the right to establish a civil society organization, which is humanitarian or non-humanitarian, but at the end of the day, Actually, I have to be very careful for this because some few organizations now been established and the Charity Commission here in UK are looking after what they are doing. So to come back to it, if we look at the civil sector as a whole, the civil sector as a whole has thousands and thousands and thousands and thousands of civil society organizations. Okay, But the most famous ones amongst them are two. One is 
the humanitarian or creaturitarian, as I called it before, organizations who work either inside the country or outside the country. Because there is the most fund. Okay. The second one is the uh, human rights organization because they are very loud voices. A lot of the government are so scared of the human rights organization. That's why they don't like all the civil society organization. The difference between humanitarian organization and other civil society organization is the strength of the money that they have. Humanitarian organizations such as uh, Oxfam, Save the Children, Care International, uh, IIC on Kuwait, uh, the, uh, the uh, Royal in, uh, Organization in, in Bahrain, uh, Hashemite in, in Jordan, uh, what else? Uh, uh, Iruza, IR, uh, IIROSA in Saudi Arabia, uh, Islamic Relief, Penny Appeal, Human Appeal, uh, Muslim Aid, all these are humanitarian organizations. But there are more, 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 more social organizations inside the civil society organization. So the most famous among us all the organizations inside the civil sector, civil society sector, are the humanitarian and the other ones which is the human rights. The third one, which is the syndicates, the unions, and the others. So please, please, please look at your society and found an organization to respond to the need of any part of your society. Whether it's a, 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 an animal, or a bird, or the habitat conservation, or the climate, or the human being, or the dog, or the cat, or the frog, or the elderly, or the displaced, or the destitute, or the homeless, or, 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 or. Because it's your role as a human being, it's your role as a custodian, uh, and uh, the, resp the responsible individual that Allah has created you on earth to look after all this. So, and don't make scars. Don't, don't politicize the organization, don't militarize it, don't securitize it, and don't make it to be run by the business in, an, in, in, in a, a non-humanitarian, or non criteritarian or non-social uh, way. Thank you very much. I'll see you next week, inshallah, in another talk. We'll decide about it and let you know, inshallah. Wassalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh.